seven brand new stadiums and a glitzy modern skyline will welcome more than a million fans over the next month. A $300 billion transformation for the most expensive World Cup ever. The human cost far greater. My husband used to come for two months every two years. This time, only his dead body came, the wife of this Nepalese migrant worker says. This migrant worker, too scared to be identified, told Human Rights Watch he had only seen his son five times in 14 years. Most of Qatar's population is foreign-born, and 800,000 of those workers live here, in areas tourists will never see, in cramped, overcrowded compounds, conditions they don't feel comfortable speaking about because of restrictions on free speech. Many still struggle to get paid on time. How does such a wealthy country not pay workers what they deserve? Because they can. McGill University's Francois Crepeau visited Qatar as United Nations Special Rapporteur a few years after it got the World Cup bid in 2010. He observed what's been described as modern-day slavery, a system where workers take out loans to be recruited by employers they are tethered to. So their vulnerabilities are being preyed on. Their vulnerability is actually constructed. It's built, it's, it's organized so that they will enter this labor world with uh, their hands tied behind their back. That's how it's organized. It's taken eight years after Qatar got the bid to implement labor reforms, but workers still can't unionize. Workplace inspectors often don't speak languages of the workers, so they can't speak with them directly. And they face retaliation from employers if they complain. Of course, it's very frustrating to hear you know, when, when companies are not paying their workers on time uh, or when workers face challenges in, in accessing justice. It's extremely frustrating. But it's also important to reflect on the progress that, that has happened. The International Labour Organization, a UN agency established here in 2018, says there were 50 workplace deaths in 2020, though the Guardian newspaper puts that figure at more than 6,500 in the past decade. I have not been able to check how these numbers are arrived at and who computes them, etc. But certainly countries like Nepal, like Sri Lanka, they calculate the number of coffins that come back. So it's probably within range. FIFA's president lashed out at Western criticism of Qatar's human rights record and called it hypocrisy. I think for what we Europeans have been doing in the last 3,000 years, around the world, we should be apologizing for the next 3,000 years before starting to give moral lessons. Human rights groups see that as dismissive. Amnesty International is calling on Soccer Canada to commit to a $440 million U.S. workers' compensation fund for laborers and families who suffered harms in the lead-up to the Qatar World Cup, as have other soccer federations. But Amnesty insists Soccer Canada has shown a deafening silence on the issue. We've continued to make the ask of our governing body and ask them, along with the Qatari government, to continue to do the work to make the change. So for those people who say that Canada soccer is punting it off to FIFA and, and Qatar, what do you say to those people? It's up to them to make those decisions with the Qatari government. Now, Earl Cochran from Canada Soccer said he is committed and his organization is committed to uh, maintaining the pressure and uh, committed to issues of representation, including LGBTQ issues as well, Lindsay. But a lot of people are saying Canada Soccer should be doing more and should be speaking out more forcefully against countries such as Qatar. Well, Omar, you, you mentioned some of these issues and it's truly just the tip of the iceberg because you're dealing with a range of emotions from human rights issues, from LGBTQ plus issues, and women's rights issues, to name a few. Exactly. When you, when you talk about LGBTQ issues, I mean, homosexuality is still illegal in this country. Same-sex relations are uh, punishable by up to three years in prison. And when it concerns women, women still need the guardianship of a male to be able to take part in many aspects of, of society, like working government jobs. Now, the challenge for 
the International Labor Organization for FIFA, uh, for Canada Soccer, will be how do you celebrate uh, Qatar's wins but also keep up that, that pressure because you want to be able to do both so that the countries can continue making progress. What will be interesting to see is that what happens after December 18th. When the cup is done, when the tourists leave, when the, the focus and the attention is not there, what happens then? And I think that if Qatar wants to continue attracting this kind of elite play, elite tournaments, uh, it will probably feel that it's in its best interest to continue this path to progress. All right. Well, a lot to keep our eye on. And I know you and the entire team here in Doha will be continuing to dive deeper into these stories throughout the week on CTV National News. Omar, we appreciate the time.